you're chatting somebody on the <coughs> you're chatting people on the social media and everybody's representing another person people are using people's pictures the person you're chatting is not the person in the picture you do it until you get to a point where you decide okay it's time for us to meet some of the things you might see on that date you might meet a man who will use you for a ritual do you want to die I met a teenager who was very proud of herself. She was talking about how many men she can sleep with in a day and in a week. And she also bragged about how much she has made. And she said that nothing in this planet will stop her because it is the easiest way to, get, to make money. I weep for that child. I weep for that child. There are some roads you travel. You know, that part is the easiest route to travel. They say two wrongs cannot make a right. You do it the first day, you succeed. Lying, you lie the first day, and nobody will catch you. You lie again, nobody will catch you. It does not make that lie a truth. One day, you're going to get stuck. One day. A teenager was sleeping for a living. There were two sisters. Their mother was still alive, and I just don't know what the situation was, but um, they said something about hardship. So this girl was the elder one who was, I can't remember her age, 19 years old, 18 years old, thereabouts. So she's been chatting somebody on the Facebook. This day, the guy said, come. She went to meet the guy. And uh, both of them drank whatever the guy brought. And they went to work. We didn't know it was happening, but we finally knew when an incident occurred. What was that incident? Now, this guy was no longer responding. So they said they were going to carry him to the hospital. This girl was crying. She was calling on God. She was praying. She was like, if I should come out of this, I would never try it again. Why do we wait until we get to that point before we remember to call on God? And you will see that this kind of people have potential some intercessory potential in fact i saw some intercessory potential in the life of that girl she was praying she was calling on god i was looking at her younger sister and this is happening right on the face of her younger sister i can imagine the shape and oh my god my heart tore apart what would you use 15,000 naira to buy maybe you buy a sanitary pad you they will even just use it to buy uh, powder and probably lipstick. Please, your, your life, what's more than that? This girl was praying, crying. God would give her another opportunity to leave. Because what I told her is okay. So the conclusion of the whole matter was they were going to carry this person to, to the hospital to check whether he was still alive and whether there was anything. But as far as they could see from there, as far as they could tell, he was not responding. He was not. They couldn't tell that he was breathing. But they really needed to go somewhere, in a medical place, to go confirm him dead, dead or alive. So they were going to involve the police. And so this whole expense is now. Who is going to take care? She's going to use the fifteen thousand naira they paid her to pay for this. It's not going to be enough. Imagine the chance. Imagine this going viral on the internet for a, a little girl. Who has a brighter future and you spoil it another teenager was pregnant and the little boy that impregnated her said mm -mm, i'm far from taking such responsibility the girl tried to take her own life because nobody was there for her and just like the other teenager told me yesterday teenagers face a lot of fears they don't know who to tell they don't know what the outcome is going to be. They don't know. It's just there's a lot of they don't know. There are some things you see somebody is threatening you instead of you to run home and tell your parents. So that particular fear we're talking about will prevent you from getting people involved that would have helped you. So she tried to take her life. She tried to do a couple of things and then she ended up going to a quack place to do a abortion. And she died there. That ended her life. I wish she never had that trip of sleeping 
with a boy. Another teenager did not die. She went to commit abortion. She did it. It was in a quack place. And um, she she succeeded in taking herself to a place where she did her abortion. And um, But something happened. Something got messed up around the area. And she wasn't able to give birth again. She's crying on daily basis. She's regretting removing the baby that would have been her only baby. Too many things are happening. And what is very, very annoying and crazy driving is that the same person you thought that, that they loved you yesterday, just give it a few minutes, you realize that it was a mere infatuation. And that is why in Living and Cleaving, we are covering all kinds of things. Um, we've been trying to put things up and around and together, but we are really have... Um, sooner than later, we're going to start showcasing, we're going to start doing some live. Um, we're going to be coming live so that we can bring people in to share their experiences. We're going to bring some people in to give you advice. We're going to bring people in to just talk to us about their relationships and about what they feel. We're going to bring people in to ask questions because <sighs> this teenager also told me, that teenager yesterday, it's like, a lot of times, this teenager also told me that um, sometimes they have questions, but they don't know who to ask. You see. So very soon, we're going to be going live so that people can bring their <coughs> questions. And it will definitely be answered. One more little teenager. I was taking care of this little child back in the years. And that child, her, little, her elder sister... Who was a, who should be like around 13, 13 years or thereabouts. So her 13 year old sister was sleep sharing the same room with her. Do you know every time that girl, that girl will come, Mom, I need you to buy me some camera ring tomorrow. Mom, I need you to buy me this. Mom, I need you to change my phone. Mom, I need, I need, I need, I need. And parents were buying. We've, we've become so busy that we don't even ask our children why they need everything that they need i just want to encourage our parents especially moms so sometimes uh, fathers can be firm on some of these things some moms just want to buy because your daughter said it let it not look as if it's your daughter that is different you're buying them something that is going to kill them i need you to change my phone i need you to when you make make them so bling 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 the guys will see them fast they will follow them when you think your child is in school, you don't know where your child is. There are some children that no matter how you try your best, with all your skills as a parent, a bad child is going to display. That is why it is very important to pray. This little girl was asking, the one that was sharing a room with her sister, Mom, buy me this, buy me that. Mom was buying. Do you know in the night, she'll come inside that room. She'll set up her camera on the ring. She will give a call to her boyfriend. <laughs> Kai God. The guy comes in on the phone and uh, this girl was busy, was going to be doing different kinds of things, changing posture, position, removing one hand of the cloth and doing different kinds of things. <sighs> I was in a land where I shouldn't just talk to her. But one day I couldn't shut up. I told her, this is wrong. I'm going to break this, your camera. If I need you to go tell your mother what to do with your camera and your ring. And then, of course, the little girl understands that right. And she warned me not to put my mouth in something that is not my business. So one day, I had to ask the mother, why do you buy everything she needs for her? What does she do with the camera ring? Is she a content creator at her age? Does she use it for her schoolwork? What does she need all these things for? Have you asked her? Have you asked her what she does before she sleeps? And I just couldn't take it anymore because my mouth, if I had to continue to stay there, my mouth would probably put me in trouble. So... And I, because nobody has hired me in that home to be a professional counselor. I cannot leave what I went to do to start doing something else. I had to leave. I dropped a word and I left. And that little child of 13 years was also talking about her ex. <laughs> I guess that was the first time I have heard that my ex. I was like, a day acting movie. Did she marry before? She was talking about her ex. So, meaning 
she has already dated somebody and this is this is obviously not her second boy oh, yeah, this is obviously not her first boyfriend life has really become a joke but honestly nothing is funny so please so little teenagers don't allow the enemy to feast on you a young little boy came home from france i believe to get married to someone that he met online <sighs> on getting home he realized that he's been chatting with an old woman and when this guy was so boiling the old lady said that she was using phone filter but the boy was still insisting that he had more to do with filter it wasn't just it wasn't just a filter problem it was all about her using someone else's picture and you know these days there's a way they put i don't know how they do they just put a picture there they'll be the first to want to call you on the video they don't move around if you make them move you realize that that's not them they don't move around for those of you that are getting into real engagement and the man is calling you on the phone to show you that this is his face they better move around the house because when they set up that when they have that setup they can't move they just have to be on one spot once they move it gets messed up so how they move around that's what i can one thing what advice i want to advise there so he came back and discovered he's been chatting an old lady for a long time and he's been investing his money on an old lady somebody older than his mother that he was definitely never going to get married to so don't take it so seriously there are some things if you find them on the internet you better do a little more verification some people have been lucky to find maybe to meet their spouse on the social media that's beautiful but not all that glitters are gold let's not judge a book by its cover let's make more verifications for my youth my teenagers i heard that you guys get scared and you do a lot of things out of fear even and cleaving is here to answer your question if you have intelligent questions ask most of the things you guys do is called love at first sight that same guy yesterday that told you that they wouldn't sleep without hearing your voice they would die if you would leave they will be the same people that will show you out if grown people are going through it let alone adults and uh, how much more you the teenagers a grown lady went to a blind date to find love she found Little did she know that that was infatuation. The guy discovered that this girl has a job and has some money. Can we get a house together and start living? They put their money together. They rented an apartment. The guy walked in with, with nothing, apart from a few personal belongings. The girl furnished the house. The guy said he was not ready to parent any child. The guy became very abusive, very insultive. But can you imagine the depression? It did not stop there before the girl could say jack robinson the guy threw her out of the house the house that she was on that furnished the guy th threw her out of it yes because in this generation today we live shameful life and we think and that's what the world signs and that's what the world even approves they will tell you that it's not a problem you got a problem with that yeah after all is a man that's gonna marry me Someone wants to marry you. As a decent girl, you stay in your father's house and wait for them to come and do the need for. But these days, once they play around with this word, fiance and fiance, the next thing, they're living together and they even start calling themselves my husband, my wife. Now you get pregnant and they throw you out. <laughs> a lot is happening. 
all this love at first sight. Actually, I was trying to buy my food and something just told me to look that way. When I looked that way and I saw that he was looking at me, there was an eye contact. He came, he said, if you could pay my food for, for if you could pay for my, for whatever I bought. And then I, I allowed him to pay. And that was how it all started. And oh my God, he was really professing his love. And I think he loved me. You go home that night, you yourself, you don't sleep. Are you okay? Infatuation. You are reminiscing over infatuation. In a little while, you realize that that's a ritualist. <sighs> sometimes it might be love. Sometimes it might be real love. Sometimes it might be real love. Let me talk about one that was real love. The man wanted to marry a woman, a woman that he could keep in the house, travel around the world and come back. So he wanted to test this lady. He went into a relationship. Remember I talked to us about stages of relationship. You get to know them. Acquaintance level. You don't just talk and open your mouth and laugh anyhow and tell the whole story of your family. You take it easy. Gradually you stand a little more official. It is acquaintance level. Along the line, if you are past that one, you get to a point where you find yourself in a relationship. Gradually you get to a point where you want to date. And that's just where you, nothing but, you start talking about um, sharing ideas about getting married. He's saying that he wants to live the rest of his life with you. And um, <clears throat> so, so they were going from acquaintance to friendship to dating, where the man has professed his love and said that he really wanted to marry her. And obviously he wanted to do that. But he didn't want to marry a woman who was going to come and sleep. He wanted to try the lady. So he told the lady to come and give him a massage. And the lady went. The man ran. I'm not doing this. So, you know, he just casually invited the lady to come visit him. He didn't think it was going to happen. This one now is a Christian lady. He didn't think it was going to happen. But guess what? The lady went. And um, the man was like, okay, who do we trust? If a Christian is going to do this, who do we trust? And that was how that particular one ended. Let's pay more attention to the decisions that we take. Let's pay more attention to what is happening in this generation today. Let's pay attention to the wickedness out there. A lot of people are ready to do anything. As far as money is involved. A lot of men are ready to do anything. As far as money is involved. Women are ready to do, it, to do anything. As far as money is involved. But let's not be that desperate. When I once arrived in in the US, back back in the years, many, many years ago here in the US, as far back as 20, 2008, around 2008 here in the US, I went to look for a job. And um, when I went there, they asked me a lot of questions. I answered everything in the affirmative. And then... Later on, the administrator told me that they were not going to take me. The administrator told me that they were not going to hire me. But, you know, he told me that you are really, you look like the person that we would have loved to hire. He said you answered everything accurately. But he said just one thing that disqualified you. And I asked what? I had told them that I was desperate to have the job. <sighs> so... The administrator was telling me that in life you don't do anything out of desperacy. You don't do anything anything out of desperacy. So once you go to a job schedule, uh, so he taught me back in 2008, when you find yourself anywhere in life, especially in a job interview, one of the things you don't say is that you're desperate. I went to read about desperacy. Desperados will do anything. A desperate person will bulge into you. Is an infatuation that he has. And then he jumps. And then he wants to do everything quickly. Before you find out who he is, he wants to marry you. You go home, you think he's love. Desperacy is not good. Tell me what a 13, 15, 17, 18 year old needs to buy. Are you trying to pay your house rent? What is that that is making you go sleep with him? Can you keep crying to uncles? Because the worst part of it is that, yes, life is crazy and life is ridiculous. But the problem, the thing is, you are not the same person that, you're not the only person that is going through it. So the person 
you really want to follow to the hotel tonight. Do you know when they will die? Do you, do you know whether tonight is their last night? If they die in that place, what will you tell the police? What will you tell the Federation? What will you tell the world at large? What will you tell your family? Probably you may have told your family that you were going for a night video. And you went to sleep in a hotel. And then at the end of the day, everybody's going to realize that you actually went to sleep with a man. And all these things are vice versa. You, the man, you went and carried the smog. The girl comes and dies in your hands. What will you do? Currently, a young boy is facing the same thing. This young boy, I feel for him because he actually meant to, he really wanted to marry that girl. That girl was the only daughter of her mother. They are Yoruba. The boy is from Ibo land. And uh, the mother of that girl didn't want the boy. One thing led to another. They, they started having secret affairs and the girl got pregnant. And the, the guy was ready to go put money on her head. But the girl was so disturbed because her family wasn't accepting the boy. The girl went to do abortion and she died. And the boy is shattered. He's shattered in so many ways. He's shattered because he really was in love. He has just lost the love of his life. He's shattered because he did not want the abortion, but the girl went for it. He's shattered because the family of the girl never accepted him, and, but he kept pushing. He's shattered. What is he going to tell the world? Who will believe him? Who is going to listen to him? Is he going to be alive to tell the story? I wish. Because if the family of the girl really wants to deal with him, they can throw him where he will no longer see this earth. Let's pay attention. Let's think. Before you think you're so smart, you, that little 15 year old that goes to do hookup and you're making a lot of money and you say it's easy and you say nobody can stop you from making that money, sweetheart, have you thought about what will happen there? Nobody knows tomorrow. Life is not promised. Pay attention to what you're doing. And God will bless you. Remember, unpleasant decision is lame. Don't forget. Thank you for joining Living and Cleaving Studio. Stella Imo here, President of Canada. <laughs>